go where, Viola? I mean, by that I mean I want to go away. And you mustn't see me or own me or claim me or anything. I mean, even if you pass me on the street, you'll have to pass me by. Oh, no, Viola. Freddie Washington was in many ways a very self-made woman. She overcame many challenges to um, succeed in film, in television, and in radio. Um, she was a lot of different things. She started out as a dancer. She quickly moved into acting and became well known for roles that she played in Shuffle Along which was one of the first black cast Broadway shows. When she's remembered at all, she's usually remembered for her role in um, the 1936 version of Imitation of Life, in which she plays a young black woman who, who passes as white. There was a significant backlash against her amongst black audiences as well, largely because they conflated Washington with her character on screen, right? So they thought Washington also was attempting to pass. Nothing could be further than the truth. I mean, she always made it clear that she was really proud to be a black woman. She never tried to pass, but viewers really thought that that Washington um, agreed with her character that the only way to succeed in America was to pass as white. Oh, I know it's terrible of me, Miss B. But you don't know what it is to look white and be black. You don't know. I can't go on this way any longer. Many of the roles that uh, Freddie Washington was typecast in fell into the category of the tragic mulatto. The tragic mulatto stereotype typically portrays the mixed race character as someone who's caught between two worlds and is unable to fully belong to either. Often the character is depicted as being torn between both their black and white identities and is unable to find acceptance or happiness in either community. The character is usually portrayed as being physically attractive, but emotionally unstable, and may be prone to suicidal thoughts or actions. At every stage of her career, Freddie Washington advocated on the part of Black people, especially working people. This was just central to her identity and to her work as a performer, that she really wanted to do nothing less than transform the industry she worked in so that those were places that were welcoming and supportive. But she also helped organize the Negro Actors Guild of America. So she really ran that. She's listed as a secretary, but really it was Freddie Washington who held that group together, helped with fundraising, helped organize them, you know, and supported black media workers during, during some of the worst years of the depression. African-Americans couldn't join the guilds and the unions and during the depression, many performers and artists and technicians were suffering because they couldn't get jobs. There really weren't in Hollywood many opportunities given at all to people of color on set. It was so difficult to make edgeways in Hollywood that it was easier for black makers to go and make their own films and kind of create their own industry, which should tell you a little bit about what Hollywood was like at the time for people of color. The obstacles were, were multiple. First of all, you know, the roles in Hollywood for black women were incredibly limited. They also confronted a great deal of colorism and this, this affected Freddie Washington in particular. She was too black to play white roles and she was considered too white to play black roles. Achieving success in the film industry is a challenging endeavor for anyone, regardless of skin color. However, it's widely recognized that people of color have faced significant systemic barriers and discrimination in the industry that make it more difficult for them to achieve the same level of success. If you were politically minded and you were a strong woman and you spoke out against racism and sexism, you quickly got a reputation for being difficult. You know, we tend to think that actors and actresses just perform roles that are scripted by other people. I think Freddie Washington is also a powerful example of how performers fought back against racist stereotypes in the roles that they played. So there was a lot of back and forth between Freddie Washington and writers and scre screenwriters um, where she would say, um, I'm not going to speak those lines. Those lines aren't something that my character would, would actually say, or that isn't true or authentic to black experiences in America. Between 1942 and 1947, during and immediately following World War II, 
She wrote a column for Adam Clayton Powell Jr.'s newspaper, The People's Voice. It was popularly known as Voice. It was a Harlem newspaper, very progressive. She used this column as, as a platform to talk about a whole range of issues. She used her column to criticize other Black actors for taking what she described as Jim Crow roles in Hollywood and arguing that Black performers should demand roles that treated them with dignity and let them play a range of characters that could describe Black experiences in America, not through stereotypes, but through rich and, and complex writing. You know, for all of this, she was really targeted by anti-communists. And it's one of the reasons I believe she's not remembered in the ways that she should be remembered today. Freddie Washington is an example of a talented actor who is not fully appreciated for her talent due to colorism and other systematic barriers. Despite her talent and advocacy work, she faced significant challenges in her career and found herself typecast. So it was a very chilly climate. And, you know, she also stopped. I mean, she she got married, you know, for a, a second time and then just kind of left when when the climate became too hostile in the early 1950s and, and didn't look backward. Furthermore, the roles that Washington played in her films were often controversial and they challenged traditional stereotypes about black women. However, it's extremely important to note that uh, Washington's talent and accomplishments as an actress were significant and her legacy as a trailblazer for black performance needs to be celebrated and recognized. While her activism may have contributed to her being overlooked during her time, we need to acknowledge the systemic barriers and discrimination that uh, people of color faced in the film industry. It's important to know that there are these histories of struggle and that when we struggle in the present, that we're part of those histories. It's so important for us to understand the leadership of black women, the things that, that Freddie Washington and Shirley Graham and Lena Horne and Hazel Scott were mobilizing and fighting for, things that we're still fighting for today and recognizing and honoring that, that leadership, I think, can be a real inspiration.